Hello again everyone, it is me Matmus. I appreciate you stopping on today's video, so thank you. We are once again talking about the L85 rifle series, and you know, I've done a couple of videos on this gun in the past in regards to how much I actually really enjoy it, and I know it has a lot of hate, a lot of different misinterpretation to its service history and the way it performs today, but I've done videos on that in the past. If you want to go check them out, feel free to, but today's video, we're actually going to be discussing the L85A3. Yeah. Yes, this rifle has finally been brought into military service with its first regiment and this is really good news for two reasons really. First of all, it's nice to see the MOD actually committing to something and delivering a product on time. From what I've been told, the L85 A3 series has actually been quite an effective contract that's been put in place to upgrade the rifle to its new specifications, which is nice to see. You know, the actual government and the MOD has put forward a plan to upgrade the rifle and has actually committed to doing so. That's a good thing. And second of all, it's going to have some features and some upgrades that I think soldiers on the ground are actually going to really enjoy. I myself actually would love to actually try the L85 A3, but it's probably never going to happen because my time in the British Army is now up and I am now serving in the Canadian Army as an artillery soldier. So sadly, I will never probably get the use of the A3 version, but let's take a look at it and go over some of its new features and what we're actually going to see and expect to see from this rifle in the near future. Now, many people will debate as to why we're upgrading the L85 A2 to another upgrade package and not just procuring a new rifle. And I keep reminding people every time about the same thing. The British Army and the MOD is not going to invest into a new firearm until they've squeezed every last penny out of the basic platform first. It is not cheap procuring an entire new battle rifle for all of the armed forces in the UK. It is way too in ineffective in terms of cost and they really want to try and you know milk as much as they can out of the L85 series before they transfer into a new rifle series and that's what they've done. It's really a cost effective way of trying to give as much capability to the rifle as they can without having to purchase a new one. There was a feasibility study for the L85A2 on a mid-life improvement project which aimed to prolong the in-service life of the United Kingdom's forces 5.56mm weapon beyond its 2025 out-of-service date. The A3 prototype, which is now actually a fully service battle rifle, includes a number of modifications, including a safety stud placed above the change lever on the trigger mechanism, housing to ensure that this lever does not over-rotate. The weaver rail on top of the upper receiver being taken off and a full length Picatinny rail has been fitted. This will allow for both day sights and night sights being mounted in tandem and allow for any other configurations of optics that they wish to put on this rifle. Something that was a real weakness of the old L85 series was the particular mounting system that they had on the rifle. The Weaver was really not very compatible with many other sighting systems and therefore redundant to have on a rifle that is designed for a modern army. One of the most defining features of the new L85 A3 is of course its foregrip and new quad rail mount. This is a complete redesign to the previous quad rail mount of the L85 A2 which was used by Daniel Defense. Of course a very useful upgrade considering that the plastic foregrip was almost redundant. The free floating barrel is going to pretty much improve accuracy and consistency and if you don't know what free floating means guys it make, basically means that there's less contact to the barrel as possible to make sure that you're not affecting the barrel's aim when you're firing the rifle. This is really the most prominent change to the rifle overall and this is what I think soldiers have been asking for with the new quad rail system. Now the quad rail system on this rifle has two different variations of what you can actually attach it to. Just like the previous L85A2 this foregrip does have two Picatinny rails but also a new H key mod which is basically a different attaching system of what we're used to with the Picatinny rail and I'm curious as to see how British soldiers are going to react to this new key system because it's not something that we're used to installing components with I'm not sure how much uh, equipment is actually compatible with that kind of locking system but it will be interesting to see and honestly it's probably a lot more effective uh, in terms of speed having to take things on and off than the Picatinny rail is because with a Picatinny rail you're actually having to clamp the dovetail uh, once you put it into the locking teeth 
of the Picatinny. I think with the keyway, it's basically just slot and turn, and it's locked in place, which I think is going to be a lot quicker than having to operate the you know wing nuts that attach components to uh, Picatinny rails. As you can see, the rifle has been given different color tone with the flat dark earth camouflage pattern, but overall it really makes no difference because British soldiers, for the most part, when they're going on operational deployments, spray down their guns anyway with spray paint to maintain the camouflage principle that they want to use in the environment they're in. Now, unfortunately, I can't find any information that really pertains to this new statement, but it is saying that the redesign of the A3 upper receiver is given for improved reliability and maintainability over the current A2 version. Now, I'm not too sure exactly what on the upper receiver is being changed internally to make sure the rifle is more reliable and easier to maintain. We all know, if you're an L85 A2 user or A1 user, that the, you know, piston spring popping out the back there is a real pain in the butt because, you know, you pull that, uh, disassembly plug pin at the back there too far out and you're gonna get a, you know a spring in the face so that's a really bad design job and maybe that's something they've rectified or fixed I highly doubt it though so when I find more information on this I will annotate it in the comment section below but right now I can't find anything that's really saying why the a3 upper receiver is being improved or what's actually happening to it so really the main changes we're looking at here are modifications to the upper receiver and the handguard the handguard and combined full-length rail system probably have the largest changes other than the actual color to the rifle. The side rails that appear to have the key mod have also backup iron sights, a much more slimmer and modular quad rail system than what we used with the Daniel Defense system. Um, I overall think that this modification is not a huge upgrade. We're talking about just a different handguard, very similar to what we had with the Danube Defense rifle, and a different paint scheme. I mean, you know, the money they must have put into this is quite a bit, but I don't think we're getting much out of it. Now, the modification has been spanned for, so far, 5,000 of the rifles by Heckler & Koch and GmbH and Company for the work to be completed by the end of this year. The estimated contract value is 2.7 million British pounds, Bear in mind here, folks, that specific tolerances of these materials are going to have to be taken into consideration, and I'm a little nervous as to what they're doing with these receivers, whether they're, you know, can continually making new receivers or just upgrading and refurbishing old ones and if that's the case that makes me a little nervous because when we're talking about extremely tight tolerances there's a lot of high risks involved with managing those variable tolerances and manufacturing processes when it comes to combining new and existing weapon components. Overall folks we can't really classify this as the new L85A3. I think it's actually quite insulting to say that this is a new rifle or a new package because it's not. There really isn't anything here that I would say is making this a overall different rifle. At least with the L85A2 package, we saw a different cocking handle, uh, different uh, magazine release catch. Uh, we saw some different changes to the, um, you know, the bolt structure, all that sort of stuff. So when it comes to this rifle, I don't see it's a massive upgrade. You know, we didn't call the L85A2 the L85A3 when we did the Daniel Defense uh, front foregrip change, and they've put some paint on it. And, you know, a lot of people are going to say, you can't polish a turd. No, it looks like they've just rolled this one in glitter. Um, I don't think the L85 is a bad rifle. I will always love it, and I know a lot of people get highly triggered by that and how terrible it is. I enjoyed it. I thought it was very accurate. I really thoroughly had a good service life with this rifle. Um, that being said, though, I know everybody has a lot of hate for it, and I do respect and appreciate that. It's not for everyone. I have operated many other uh, AR-15 platforms. I actually own my own C7 AR-15. 15 right now for the Canadian Army and I love that rifle too but I'll always come back to my L85A2 because it's just how my muscle memory and how my body relates to bullpup design. Is the L85A3 going to be the next best thing for the British Army and our infantry and ground troops? I don't think so in any way shape or form. I think there's actually going to be a little bit of controversy over this rifle getting these upgrades. I think the Brits are pretty much looking at it as okay Great, you put an extra foregrip on there, again. Uh, no, it's time for them to actually get a new service rifle. A lot of soldiers out there are not happy with this package and not happy with uh, how the L85 performs. But I don't think we can really, you know, argue with the MOD to say that they want to save money. And I'd much rather them save pennies here than cut more soldiers uh, out of the armed forces. So, take it with a pinch of salt, folks. 
Of course, the upgrade package is not this, you know, shiny new upgrade that's making everything internally different and all these different upgrades to make the rifle a lot better. It's purely just aesthetics and ergonomics to how the rifle is used, which is fine by me. You know, it improves the rifle overall, but it's going to save a lot of money in the long run than having to procure this new rifle system, and that could take effect on people's jobs. And I don't want that to happen. I want us to continue, you know, keeping troops in our armed forces in the British uh, military to allow us to fulfill our role and you know if they're gonna say let's buy a new rifle sure let's do it it's gonna cost us however many million pounds they're gonna say well okay we've got to cut somewhere else let's chop some infantry regiments let's chop some whatever and that's not what I want to see so I understand this isn't the greatest uh, upgrade package in the world but it's still good enough to say they're trying to keep it rolling they're trying to squeeze every penny out of this rifle before they look into a new upgrade package 2025 really isn't that far away. Some people are actually saying that it's supposed to be till 2035. That's a different story, and I'm curious as to see whether or not that would actually stay in place, that that's when they will look at a new rifle. But if that is the case, we are looking at a long, long time until we see a new rifle replacing the L85 series. Look, I'll always say it, and I've said it many times in this video, I love the rifle, but I think in this particular configuration has they've upgraded it. I think they could have done a lot better and I think maybe if the money was there and they could have actually saved a little bit more they should have just gone into a new contractual obligation to procure a brand new rifle for the British Army and Armed Forces. Of course the Grenadier Guards were the first unit to be issued this rifle recently and they posted it on their Facebook so good for them I hope they're enjoying it I'd love to hear anyone serving in that particular regiment to let me know what they think is it something that you think is a worthwhile cause I have noticed in the comments section about this rifle a lot of people saying that the front handguard is potentially going to be heavier than the Daniel defense handguard which is not a good thing considering the the new Elkin and the handguard and the foregrip is adding a lot of extra weight to a rifle that was also quite heavy when it first came into service anyway so let's just see what uh, you know the regiment thinks I'm sure in the next few months we're going to hear some more information come back from them and you know they're going to give their feedback to it but if anyone is serving there right now or know of anyone who's serving with the a3 rifle please let me know what you think of it and uh, your opinions folks i hope you enjoyed today's video and learned a little bit about this new weapons platform if you did enjoy and want to support my channel please go check out my patreon account it'd be much appreciated and uh, leave a like and a comment i will see you next time for more military related content and if you want to be notified of any of the content coming up hit the little subscribe bell button and you should be notified of any new videos coming up all the best folks and once again congratulations to the grenadier guards for getting their new upgraded l85a3 take care folks bye bye